Hello, and thank you for joining us for another episode of The Wash, your trusted resource for the latest in public health and hygiene. This podcast is brought to you by Meritech, the leader in automated hygiene technology. I'm your host today, Joe Johnson. Today, we're going to talk about hand hygiene and early childhood education and how exactly child care centers can get back to in-person learning safely. I'm joined by Patrick Burke, the sales manager for early childhood education here at Meritech, and Robert Kenya from Education Safety Solutions. Thank you both for joining us here today. Robert, before we dive in, I would love to hear a little bit of background on yourself and Education Safety Solutions. Uh, Thanks, Joe. So we've worked with over 100 early childhood education and K-12 institutions, everything from launching, opening, and operations to technology and fulfillment. And we've done this seamlessly through the pandemic for a number of institutions, and that was by implementing healthy and safe operating plans for these institutions to support essential workers and now through the reopening phase. Great. So I was wondering if we could just start with talking about the importance of hand hygiene in early education. How important of a factor is that into their day-to-day and has this increased since the COVID-19 pandemic? That's a great uh Great question and a great topic. So hand hygiene is vital and has been a regulated aspect of early childhood education for as long as I've been uh, involved in that sector of the industry. So there are a number of times throughout the day and during different activities that both staff and children in early childhood education, so in the childcare facilities, are required to wash their hands. And it is a significant number. And it is, again, highly regulated both by the uh, divisions in each state that oversee childcare and health departments. So it's a significant time of the day that's taken up overseeing and managing these regulated practices. And then it has also increased uh, with the presence of COVID-19. So in addition to every time children obviously are touching food, going to the bathroom, and, and a number of other other times throughout the day. Now, also, it's the first thing that has to happen when they enter the child care center, and they must also have hands washed right before they leave with their parents during pickup time. So in addition to the significant number of times children and staff are required to wash hands, now during the pandemic, that has increased. So what are the most common ways students are currently washing their hands? while at a child care facility? So the most common way in most classrooms, in most centers, there are sinks that the staff can use for hand washing. And in in many cases, the children can use for hand washing. In other cases, there are banks of bathrooms, just like you would see in a school. The teacher has to take the entire class to the bathrooms to wash their hands in a height appropriate sink and then bring the whole class back overseeing the entire process through, you know, watching each child wash their hands to make sure that they're doing it properly while trying to manage that group. So it's often happening as a group? Yes. Even when it's in the classroom, when it's, uh, there's a convenient height appropriate sink, it, you know, you have to line them all up, herd them together, and then oversee to make sure that they're actually washing their hands appropriately, you know, taking the right amount of time, well, you know, the whole process. Pat, I was wondering if you could shed a little bit of light into the pitfalls that the child care providers might run into with manual hand washing or the use of an instant sanitizer. Yeah. So like Robert was saying, you know, it's a, it's a bit of a process to gather the kids. They are often doing that hand washing in a group. So with a manual hand wash, it's a lot of the same scenarios that we face for adults. You know, the manual hand wash is a little bit more time consuming. There's definitely some supervision involved with making sure that kids are doing it properly, hitting all the steps. And the variability of the behavior from child to child, you know, is a pretty big deal. You might have some children that do the hand wash perfectly and then other ones that are a little bit more of an issue. And hand washing, believe it or not, there's there's a lot of different steps to do a proper hand wash, you know, to hit the fingertips, to, to fully work through all the fingers, to use the right amount of uh, soap, rinse. So manual hand washers, just inherent kind of pitfalls there. With the hand sanitizer in childcare facilities, 
it's detrimental to the health of the skin. So the natural oils on the skin that protect and keep your hands healthy, it gets damaged by the alcohol and then it can create cracks and allow pathogens to, to be in the hands. And so ultimately, you know, kind of ineffective in, you know, cleaning the hands. Plus children like putting their hands in their mouths, <laughs> having an alcohol-based uh, sanitizer, you know, being used too frequently, you know, you've got that uh, risk of, of alcohol poisoning. It's a, it's a real risk. And, and I've seen it, you know, brought up numerous times of, of, you know, being aware of overusing the alcohol sanitizers. So definitely some things to watch out for in a childcare facility. Mm -hmm. So before going any further, Pat, I would love for you to just give a brief overview for those who may not be familiar of clean tech. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, if, if you're not familiar with clean tech, so Meritech is the maker of clean tech, which is the world's only fully automated hand washing system. I, can, I like to think of it as a, an ecosystem. We are the provider of the perfect hand wash. So the systems are touchless. When you stick your hands in a cylinder, a photo eye detects the movement and it begins cylinders that are going to spray the hands with a mixture of our uniquely formulated hygiene solution. The pressurized water sprays from fingertips all the way up to the wrists, removing 99.9% .9 of pathogens clinically backed. Got multiple studies on that. Zero contact points, zero cross-contamination. The systems use less water than a traditional sink, produce less waste. All of our systems are made in the United States. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> kind of describing the full ecosystem. So. Clean tech ultimately is, you know, these systems that provide the perfect hand wash each and every time, all of which the hand wash duration, it's a 12 second hand wash. So it's a really awesome system. So there's obviously a lot of benefits for any application. Could you speak specifically to the benefits that a clean tech station could have in a childcare facility? Yeah. So kind of the, some of the pitfalls surrounding, you know, was the fact that it's, uh, there's the variability of human behavior. So it takes that away. Our systems each and every time, you know, it standardizes the process of the hand wash. So it's, it's 12 second hand wash and you can expect the same 99.9% .9 pathogen removal on each and every one. It's fast, right? As compared to a manual hand wash, we have that water savings each and every bit, you know, just over a half a gallon in each and every hand wash it touches the hand. So, you know, unlike a manual sink, turn on the, the faucet and water's running down the drain. When you stick your hand in, in our systems, all of the water touches the hands and is used for washing the hands. So when you get in a hand wash in a clean tech system, it's good for the skin. Hands feel great. So what clean tech model would you recommend works best for childcare? We have a number of systems. Four of our commercial systems typically work best in a childcare, the ELF models and then the 500 models. They're both of our more compact models that would typically go into a childcare. We have a wall mount system and then a cabinet mount, counter mount. There's just a couple things that we'll typically talk about, you know, with what would work better, but, but yeah, basically those two models fit great in childcare applications. So Robert, we talked about this briefly, but I was wondering if you could just shed a little bit uh, more light into the different times throughout the day and where these events are taking place in childhood for, for hand hygiene. Sure, so it's actually, regardless of where it takes place, whether it's in the classroom or if they have to take all the children and round them up and line them up and take them uh, to the bathroom to wash their hands, Obviously, there's a lot of time to do a proper hand wash to monitor each of these child. So it's happening in the classroom where we've seen the ELF model work really, really well, you know, uh, it installed at the appropriate height for that classroom, whether it be toddlers or preschoolers, whatever the age, you know, and that allows the teacher uh, in that room to not be um, overseeing the actual hand wash because had, I believe it's 12 seconds. I mean, it's a very fast process to get the perfect hand wash. Uh, so you're moving the kids through that process a lot faster, which brings programming time back into your day. You're talking about, 
you know, early childhood education has grown uh, significantly with the curriculum requirements and, and what's expected developmentally in these child care centers every year. And teachers are constantly looking to get more time back into their programming between meals and naps hand washing and all these things that have to be done. And when you think about how often you're washing hands with the children, if you're dropping that from a dozen kids to 12 seconds every time right in their room, you're putting 20, 30 minutes back into your programming day. So so it's really beneficial the entire way around from taking the human error out of the hand washing process to bringing time back into the programming of the day. You know, it, it, there's a huge benefit. So whether you're taking them out into uh, a bathroom or uh, a hallway to wash their hands or whether it's right in their room, uh, you're saving a lot of time. Could you speak further about the regulations that child care facilities follow? Sure. So they're regulated in every state, a lot of times through the Department of Health and Human Services or uh, Department of Education. For staff, it's every time that they're really moving surfaces. So if they're helping uh, children in the bathroom, if they're helping children with their meals, uh, if they're going from art supplies to a different surface touch, they're washing their hands. With the children, it's the same. Uh, so every time they're, they're they have a bathroom break, or every time that they're touching food, every time they touch their faces, as we know. So it really stacks up. You're looking probably at a uh, minimum of a dozen times a day, probably more closer to 20 times a day for the, the children, and even more than that for the staff. I mean, we've definitely talked a lot about the time savings for the kids, but the amount of time saving that that would uh, afford the educators and the caregivers is just um, mind boggling. Exactly. And like we said, the, it goes right back into programming all the time that you're saving. So when you can pick up time uh, from meal time, when you can pick up time from um, hand hygiene, which you don't want to look at it like you're picking up time from it because it's important and it has to be done. There's no way to make it go faster if you're washing your hands in a sink. but with the ELF system, as we've seen in, in child care centers, that, that 12 seconds is great. It's a, it's a huge improvement. So there's obviously been a lot of reactive measures specifically for COVID, like masking and social distancing recommendations. But Robert, I know you mentioned earlier that hand washing has always been and will always be a massive part of child care center operations. So to both uh, Pat and Robert, I'm just wondering what type of long-term benefits would implementing a solution like clean tech offer? For my clients in early childhood, you know, in September, you start to ramp up your staff for the flu epidemic. So, you know, we've normalized cold and flu season every year. We just deal with it. But in, in the early childhood world, it, it wipes out centers. You know, you have teachers off for a week or two weeks at a time. So you have staff and you have children missing time because of the flu. And if children are missing childcare time because of the flu, that means their parents aren't going to work. So this is a long-term investment. While, while it responds to the COVID-19 threat, it also addresses uh, your, your annual health threats that, that we deal with every year. So I see it as a, as a long-term um, health and safety improvement to any childcare center that's going to impact these problems that we see every year. I've heard that numerous times in talking to customers and, you know, people calling in about our systems is, is the fact that, yeah, it is something that, you know, the flu season is something that they deal with yearly and, it, and it's very serious. And you said they, we've normalized it but it's actually a really big deal and it affects childcare facilities. And I'm, I'm a parent of two kids and I'm very familiar with, you know, when the season comes, like, <laughs> you know, I really wish they were doing more hand washing, you know what I mean? Just doing everything that they can to, to minimize the, the spread of, of pathogens in those, you know, in their facilities. But yeah, uh, just everything you said, totally agree. Uh, I think another great, um, benefit of clean tech is just that the ease of use that it affords. I know you mentioned this earlier, how so much of hand hygiene and childcare 
requires supervision when it's manual. And by automating that process, you're introducing a hand hygiene method that does not require supervision that children could go and use whenever they feel they need to wash their hands. And humans are creatures of habit. And so by making hand washing a more common aspect of their day to day, I really see it carrying over into the rest of their life of just genuinely wanting to wash their hands more often because it's become so much a part of their life while they're in the classroom. Sure, it's, if it's easy and it doesn't need to be supervised, if, if a teacher can direct the child, even at, even at an older toddler age, it's time to wash your hands and they you know, walk up to a height appropriate health unit in the wall, you know, they can, they can oversee the, the, the process without having to manually assist them. So it's great. And like you said, it, it, it just becomes more a part of, of your culture. You know, part of what we're doing here as a response to COVID is we're implementing best practices. So while this in early childhood has been a regulated practice for a long time, the act of perfecting it and the need to increase uh, the frequency is something that's going to be a long-term culture change for us that we're going to see in early childhood education. And so, Robert, I know that in previous discussions that you've mentioned, you've been a part of the conversation surrounding special funding for early child care to support improved hygiene because of COVID. Could you speak a little bit more about your involvement in that process? Sure. So there was a significant amount of, of funds distributed in the first CARES Act. We're going to see probably more distributed again in the near future. I would think it could happen by the end of the year. I know the discussions are already ongoing and it's going to be to safeguard early childhood education facilities, not just from the threats of COVID, but long term. We'll protect us against the next threat or, or the cold and flu that that we've already discussed. So with that funding, you know, early childhood education groups that, that I work with will be looking at systems that will have a, a long-term return on the investment, like a clean tech, the ELF system, which is perfect for early childhood. You know, it's, it's a marketing benefit for these centers to say, you know, we've, we've perfected the hand washing of our staff and our and the children in our care. So in that sense, it has another return, but you know, the number one reason is health and safety. Uh, the companies I work with, that's their number one priority. And uh, we'll be implementing systems that drastically increase and improve the health and safety. Great, thank you both for providing your expertise on this subject. I think this was a great discussion. Uh, thank you, Joe. Thank you. If you would like more information about Cleantech automated hand washing stations, please visit our website, Meritech.com. There we have tons of information about early childhood education and great webinars where our CTO and head engineer, Paul Barnhill, goes in depth on everything you need to know about Cleantech. We'll link to all these different resources that we mentioned throughout this podcast, and you'll find it on Meritech.com. Thank you again for joining us for another episode of The Wash. 